Hi everyone, this is Shainti bringing you another episode of Shainti Finance. Today we are going to work with watercolors and this is going to be a very realistic but very easy and simple watercolor painting of underwater rocks. So how to paint underwater rocks. So what I'm doing is first I'm wetting the entire surface of the paper and I'm using cold press watercolor paper here and then I'm going to put some aqua colors like very very light verdian green and gray and different shades of blue on that paper and you don't have to blend them or you don't have to be perfect on them and you can lay them anywhere you like it's because the we are going to paint rocks underwater so they are going to have a lot of texture and whatever doesn't blend whatever kind of blotchy look you get is just going to add to that texture so all is well so you can see that I'm adding a lot of paint. By the way, all the materials that I'm using in for this painting are listed below in the video description. So you can check that section out. So once that initial layer of paint dries, I am taking a pencil and I'm using a regular graphite pencil here, but you can feel free to use a water soluble pencil if you are worried that the graphite marks might show through behind the watercolor painting. But this uh, painting will use a lot of dark colors in between so I am thinking that a graphite pencil will just work out fine um, so I am painting a lot of rock shapes some big rocks small rocks medium rocks different rock shapes they don't have to be any perfect shape because they're rocks so naturally they'll have any kind they can have any kind of different shapes and between the different small and I'm sorry big and medium rocks I am filling in the places with smaller rocks like circles ovals and all different kind of shapes so yeah it took a little bit of time to draw all the rocks but it's totally worth that time and by a little bit of time I just mean that you know it's a repetitive work it's not really time consuming but a little bit of repetitive work so now I'm starting on painting on the rocks once again you do not have to worry too much about blending and don't worry you have to worry too much about the right color in the right place the most important thing is that the sides needs to be dark and you have to fix which is the side of your light source and you have to put all the darker colors on the other side and the um, shadows have to make it kind of look like a round shape so I am wetting a couple of rocks and I'm going to show you real time how I'm painting these rocks so I'm waiting wetting the area of the rocks only and I'm starting with putting a little bit of darker shadow colors in this one I'm using kind of like a greenish blue color on the sides however you don't have to stick to that greenish blue color everywhere you can use any kind of shadow color like a shade of purple somewhere use gray somewhere use blue and in fact all of that various different shades will bring in variety and that would actually look more realistic even better now once I put in all the darker areas I'm kind of making the texture look also trying to create kind of the look of light and shadow because the surface of a rock is not smooth so when light hits on this uneven surfaces it is going to have a lot of different light and shadow areas so you don't have to be perfect on it like you're thinking oh she's drawing straight lines oval lines and such shapes and uh, I have to perfectly get that but once I go get a little bit further along into the painting you will realize that that you don't have to exactly follow the sh same shapes or anything I'm just trying to create more and more added texture a lot of darks and lights and the illusion of depth is what I'm going for here to create that rounded and edgy look to create a three-dimensional look yes that's the word I was looking for all this while so kind of making it look like it has got depth it has got height it's got width that's what I'm looking for so onto the second rock once again I'm showing this real time to make you understand the process of how I'm painting each and every rock and then once I have shown you a couple of them I'll move on to a higher speed now I filled in the surrounding areas with like the edges of the rocks with the darker colors uh, or the shadow colors and on one side I'm going a little bit darker than the other if you can uh, see that and uh, then I am filling in the spaces in between the bigger and smaller rocks with a darker color 
Now I have to do that in multiple layers to get the amount of darkness and also at this point I'm probably not being able to gauge how much dark I want to go in this um, crevice areas in between the smaller and bigger rocks because light is not really reaching those areas so they're going to be pretty dark but at this point I am I have not yet laid down all my dark so I'm not exactly sure how dark I need to go so I'm going kind of like a fairly dark color and it's kind of like a inky blue black mixture of have a lot of indigo a little bit of a black tiny bit of blue mixed together to get this uh, color that I am putting in between in these crevices in between the rocks. So yes, you have to go carefully uh, around all the edges and in between the rocks and paint those areas. It might seem a little bit tedious it, and it probably is, but it is totally worth all that effort and you will see how it works out all in the end. Now I'm moving on to a larger speed because I've shown you in real time how the thing would work. And now I'm going to just do the same thing over and over again in the entire area, apart from a little area where I'm going to paint some ripples. So yes, all now from now till almost the very end of the painting, all I'll be doing is the same thing over and over again in different rocks. However, when I say same thing over and over, each rock is different. They have a different shape. They have a different surface. They have a different surface area. They have different depths. So you need to vary the um, colors. One thing that you need to vary, you need to vary the shapes, which you have already done by putting in different shapes of rocks. And then you need to vary the texture. So the lights and darks you are putting in the different areas are going to help you create the different textures. You will see that in some of the areas, I'm barely putting any color at all. I'm just going around them. That is kind of going to make you feel that light is directly hitting those areas and the surrounding areas are kind of planes and edges and that will give you that three-dimensional look at this point you probably can understand where I'm going on and at this point I have an idea how dark I need to go in between those rocks in the crevice areas but to get a real dark bright color with watercolors I always paint in multiple layers so my initial layer is probably a little bit lighter but then I'll come back and fill in those areas with darker layers because it is so much easier in with watercolors to go light to dark than from dark to light erasing watercolors is a tiny bit more difficult than adding watercolors so we try to always go the easier route if it doesn't work out then always we can go the harder route or the more not so easy route i wouldn't say hard it's not nothing is hard art is all about fun and uh, this painting especially uh, dictates to me of late i have been trying to do more and more paintings that are kind of relaxing yet beautiful simple easy yet has a very aesthetic feel to it and may will give you the ultimate feeling of creating fine art so it is easy it is very simple but it has to also look good in the end so that it gives you that creative feeling that you have created something very beautiful very unique how and at the same time you don't have to toil over it you don't have to worry too much over it so that that has been my goal about creating art of late and I think this is one of the paintings where I have succeeded very well to create such a painting now the fishes were quite an afterthought I just wanted to paint some underwater rocks and the tutorial was going to be all about that but then I thought a couple of tiny fishes kind of like goldfishes wouldn't hurt I don't think these are any kind of real fishes that I tried to paint. And I, I had a goldfish in my mind and kind of wanted to um, do that same thing. And all I'm doing is adding orange and red and a little bit of yellow. And that's, that's all about that fishes. And you don't have to worry about too much about the details. All you need is some bright colors. Once I have added the fishes, I'm going around the fish's body and and uh, painting some shadow of the fishes. Now you will notice that I'm adding the shadows only on one side and that will show you the direction of light. I have throughout the painting kind of paid attention to what is the direction of the light and uh, worked accordingly. So now I am pre 
creating this little whirlpool or the circular ripple pattern in the water that would give you an added uh, value to this painting and just not making a boring painting where I'm painting rocks all over the place um, so this is just going to add a little bit of more interest into the painting and also one more thing that you learn in the same painting how to paint ripples of water so you can see that there was a base color that was pretty dark, pretty light. And then I'm slowly adding circles and some circles are thicker and some are thinner. And some are very nice smooth circles. Some are not so much nice. And that variety is again very important. Just like the shape and texture variety and color variety in the rocks were important. It, it's the similarly important in this ripple as well. So I'm almost to the end of the painting where I am finishing off by adding a lot more color to the crevices. Now these finishing touches although are the last bit but these are very very important because this is finally that adds the ultimate value to the painting. I hope you enjoyed this painting watching this and learning from this as much as I enjoyed painting this. and. Uh, and share your thoughts in the comments if you did and if you did not feel free to share that as well because your comments motivate me they help me go get better try harder and I'm always all about learning from you that how I can improve myself my painting or my tutorial style or whatever you want from me do feel free to let me know in the comments that mean a whole world to me and if you like this share it with your uh, talented friends who would like to do the same and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you next time